Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will talk about AVX 512 on the 12900K. Even though that's typically not a topic I would talk about so much, but there have been a lot of wrong news um, regarding AVX 512 support of the 12900K prior to launch. Also, long time prior to launch, and that's maybe the reason why this information was simply wrong. And that's the thing with leaks, 99% of the time they're usually correct, but this is one of the 10% which is clearly wrong. Because some of the news, um, referring to one from Anantec, was listing that AVX 512 is fused on the CPU, it's physically disabled. So they made a huge post about that. Um, I'm not sure where they got the information from, but I can just tell you that it's not correct. And that's what we will test in today's video, because it just requires the specific BIOS version and then disable the e cores. The reason for that is that Gracement, the e cores, the tiny cores of the 12900K, they are not capable of running AVX 512. They only support AVX 1, AVX 2. And the P cores, in theory, support AVX 1, AVX 2, and AVX 512. But running a hybrid design on the CPU, it's quite difficult to have different instruction sets running. And that's why I guess Intel made it easy for themselves and just decided when the e-cores are running, AVX 512 is simply disabled for the entire CPU. Because 99% of you out there, especially because this is a gaming targeted CPU, AVX 512 will not be necessary. And I cannot even think of one application that can use, except for some specific benchmarks that can make use of AVX 512. But there are certainly some scientific calculations out there because when I check out the post where the news was stated that AVX 512 is not supported, I saw a lot of disappointed people, but I can assure you there's no need to worry. You can still use AVX 512 on the 12900K. You simply have to disable the e-cores. It's that easy. And now you might ask why even use AVX 512 in the first place on the P cores. And the reason is probably simple. I guess Intel will just reuse the P cores on different CPUs, probably server CPUs without E cores, which will then be able to support AVX 512 natively. But for gaming, I can just tell you that there is maybe a handful of games that can support AVX 1, maybe AVX 2, not sure about that. But I've seen some stuff about Cyberpunk and also Diablo 2 which were um, using AVX instru instructions, but everything else is typically still running SSE extensions these days, and so it's not really an issue for gaming. And that's why I guess it's also totally fine that on a 12900K, which is a clearly gaming targeted CPU, you're not running AVX 512, because for gaming it's simply not relevant. So you might ask, why not make P cores without AVX 512? And at least according to some Intel sources, it's also better for the thermals of the CPU because the AVX 512 makes up a lot of room or takes up a lot of room inside the CPU die, which might first sound, sound weird. So you could think, hey, just get rid of AVX 512 and pack more cores into the die. But then you have the issue with the thermal density and might run into temperature issues. And according to Intel, it also helps that if you use this like dead silicon to spread the heat across the cores. I think that's a reasonable reason and I guess Intel knows what they're doing. So yeah, let's just get to it and check how you can use AVX 512. This is our full stock configuration. As you can see, CPU is running 8 plus 8, 8 P cores, 8 E cores, everything else, also the clocks completely stock. We will now use Benchmade. It's a great software. I can absolutely recommend this. So if you want to run any kind of benchmark, for example, different Cinebench versions, and you're not sure where to find them online, then just simply download Benchmade. And then you can find everything already included in one tool. And it also features Ycruncher. And as far as I know, I'm not sure how many other tools or benchmarks can utilize AVX 512. But Ycruncher certainly can do that. And we will just perform one, one B run see what a performance looks like to get um, yeah, baseline with stock performance and then have a comparison value if we will be able to activate AVX by flashing to the other BIOS and then uh, disable the e-cores then we should get a performance uplift even though we are actually like neglecting the e-cores if we disable them but that should allow to enable AVX 512 and give us a better performance and now the stock performance run has about 28 seconds. 
So now I will flash to a different BIOS version, which should allow to activate AVX512 by simply disabling the eCores. Then we will go back to BIOS, check BIOS settings, go back to Windows, perform the benchmark again, and check performance. We are performing this test run with the BIOS version 0083 on the Maximus Apex. This BIOS version is not publicly available, but that's also mainly because at this point when I'm shooting this video, nothing is publicly available. And I guess this will just make it as a BIOS feature in like the final BIOS release. But let's just go quickly over the settings. Just loaded XMP1 with 5200C38. Everything else is basically stock. If we scroll down, you can see, except for the memory voltage, which is set by the XMP profile, everything else is stock. Also, if we go to AVX related controls, you can now see that there's AVX2, which you can enable and disable, but that's available in every single BIOS version. And now we also have the AVX512, which you could enable, disable. Auto is automatically enabled. You can already see on the bottom, note AVX512 is only available when e-cores are disabled. So if we switch to advanced and then CPU configuration and set the active efficient cores to zero, usually this, this would be the stock configuration where it's set to all, but we set it to zero, so they're disabled and now AVX512 should be working. Just apply, go to Windows and then we will check performance. Now back in Windows, we can already see just by looking at the instructions in the CPU-Z window that AVX 512 is now detected. Well, that could maybe also be like a readout mistake or something that would still not work. That's why we will perform again a Y-Cruncher run and Y-Cruncher will automatically detect if AVX 512 is available and it will make use of it. And we will see that in the result of the performance. CPU is again running at stock 4900 MHz across all of the eight P cores. Memory is still clocked to 5200C38. And as you can see with 24.6 seconds, the only possible reason to get this type of performance is that AVX512 is actually also working. Just by comparing the performance numbers and also, I mean, CPU CD clearly indicates after deactivating the E cores, which are not featuring AVX 512, and the P cores are featuring it, then you can clearly see that CPU C straight shows AVX 512 support, and also performance numbers are clear after disabling the E cores, and you lose cores, and it's still faster with um, the AVX 512 enabled on the P cores. It's a clear indication that AVX 512 is clearly working and it's not physically disabled. So if that's a use case for you, personally for me, it's not really relevant, but I've seen, if I look at those like misinformed uh, news posts from back then, then there were some people that were unhappy about dropped AVX 512 support and I can ensure you it's working if you need it. You just simply have to have the correct board. In this case, it's the, the Maximus Apex with the correct BIOS version at this point because it's too far away from launch right now. I'm not sure if it will directly be available for the launch BIOS, but I guess so. Then simply get the correct board with the correct BIOS and it's no issue whatsoever to run AVX512 if you need it. As I said before, for me personally, it's not really relevant. Might be for like a white cruncher competition, but for everything else, also gaming, it's not really relevant. But if you need it for some kind of specific computing reason, then you can use it on the 12th gen Intel CPUs. Since there has been quite a delay between me shooting this video, like the original video footage and releasing it now, and there has been the launch in between and Intel also finally figured out that AVX 512 is still working or there are workarounds to make AVX 512 work, even though Intel officially does and did not support AVX 512 on the 12th gen CPUs. That's also, if you followed the Intel presentations during 12th gen launch, Intel also clearly stated that only AVX1, AVX2 are supported and not AVX512. But we know and we've seen um, by using special BIOS and also just disabling e-cores, you can make AVX512 work. But meanwhile, I also heard some voices from the industry that apparently Intel might be working on a fix to block AVX512. And I'm not sure if that's entirely true or not. Could also be just a rumor, could be wrong. Intel, if you're doing that, I can just strongly tell you not to do it. And um, I mean, especially if you're looking back, I don't know, sixth, seventh, eighth gen of the Intel CPUs, Intel had a very bad reputation within the community. And that's not only because there were only incremental steps between the CPUs, but also how the company behaved. 
and Intel improved quite a lot. They improved significantly over the last year, especially like the communication for reviewers, the communication for the community and everything. Intel improved drastically, also with a new CEO. And I just hope that Intel won't lose themselves like mid on the way, because small decisions like that would be a very, very bad sign in the wrong direction. So if you're working on that, if you're really working on artificially blocking AVX 512, that would be quite a bad move. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not, so just wanted to add that in the video in the end. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye.